Hello everyone, welcome back to this uh, sixth module on uh, reliability based structural design. In this module, we are going to discuss isoprobabilistic transformation and our first topic is Morgenstern model. Now, in this series of lectures, we will discuss three different models. The first one is obviously Morgenstern model as you can see on your screen and it will be followed by Natoff model and finally, we will also discuss Rosenblatt transformation. So, let us continue our journey in this lecture. So, in the previous lectures, we discussed how to solve reliability problems when we have a limit state given along with the random variables. Now, if you look at those random variables, mostly they are defined by their marginals. And we developed models for first order reliability methods where uh, we considered four different cases. We first started with uncorrelated normal and then we considered the variables to be non-normal and for non-normal random variables, if you recall, we introduced a technique called equivalent normalization and this is one also we discussed in the previous lecture how to implement it in uh, MATLAB codes. So, let us quickly go through once more. How do we apply this equivalent linearization? So, we have a PDF for any given random variable defined by x. So, then at a particular point x star, we fit a normal distribution and for normal distribution, we need to find out mean and standard deviation and for that reason, we develop two equations as you can see on your screen. We discussed this multiple times, we solved problems, we developed MATLAB code. So, this is uh, familiar with us and uh, the graphical representation also you can see on your screen. Now, in this uh, transformation, if you pay attention, we have only one random variable. Now, <clears throat> in reliability problem, very often we deal with multiple random variables which are correlated. Now, for correlated random variables, we developed an Eigen analysis that decouples the system. So, if we have a set of random variables which are correlated, obviously, they are defined by their covariance matrix. Now, once we have this covariance matrix, then we can perform an Eigen analysis where we introduce this transformation. So, originally we are in the x space that we convert into y space through this transformation. And this v matrix is nothing but the eigenvectors obtained from the Eigen analysis of this Cx matrix. So, that is what we applied. So, the moment we have this covariance matrix Cx is defined, then we perform an Eigen analysis. So, we find out Eigen values and Eigen vectors. The Eigen vectors that we obtain helps us to decouple the system. So, it converts x into y. Then naturally, we need to find out the properties of y and for that again, we use expectation operator. So, if we have a relation x equal to vy, obviously, if we take the expectation on both sides, after uh, this matrix manipulation, then what we get is the expectation of y from the expectation of x. So, on the right hand side, we already know this capital V matrix because these are the Eigen vectors. So, these Eigen vectors form the V matrix and then using that V matrix, we can find out the fast moment of y. And similarly, we can also find out the CY matrix and obviously because this is an orthogonal transformation, CY matrix will be a diagonal matrix and this leading diagonal is the eigenvalue of the CX matrix. So, this all we discussed and, and we solved multiple problems using this transformation. Now, the question comes whenever we have two random variables, how can we get their joint distribution? Now, at the beginning of this course, we again 
studied joint distribution if you recall how a joint distribution is defined as you can see on your screen so if you have if x and y so that is uh, a joint distribution between x and y so we follow the standard notation small f is the pdf so small f x and y is the pdf joint pdf between x and y now obviously if we find out what is the probability that x will remain between a1 to a2 and y will remain b1 to b2 then obviously we have to integrate this pdf over the appropriate range in this case the range is a1 to a2 and b1 to b2 so that's the description of probability when we have joint distribution and in this case we have two random variables we can extend this for multiple random variables now the property of pdf we already know that area under this or in this case it is volume under this joint distribution joint pdf is also one so as you can see on your screen so we have this 3d bell shaped surface that is the joint distribution between x and y now the entire volume under this surface is equal to 1 and then when we integrate this f x y over one dimensions for example if we integrate over y obviously y dimension will vanish will be left with only x and that is what is called marginal distribution and we also discussed how we can get the marginal distributions and uh, it is not a i mean both way process so from joint distribution we can find out marginals but from the marginals we cannot construct and there we need some additional information and in fact today's uh, lecture is totally dedicated how we can act, bring back the original joint distribution from the marginals because all our problem statements have marginal description of random variables but very often we need to know what is the joint distribution so now we know the relation between pdf and cdf in joint distribution as you can see on your screen so if we know the small pdf we can integrate it to get the capital cdf or capital pdf and obviously we know if we know the capital pdf then we can differentiate that to get the small pdf and for random variables to be normal the life is simple we can actually construct multi-dimensional um, joint pdf so you have k-dimensional multivariate random variables x which is following normal distribution so we have mean and uh, the standard deviation and obviously if they are correlated we have covariance matrix then in that case we know this capital sigma then for this normal distribution the expression for joint distribution you can see on your screen so if you have two dimensions as you can see here x1 and x2 then for two dimensions again we have the joint normal distribution as you can see on your screen now obviously in this case it has some correlation that you can identify from the shape of this joint distribution now the question is when we have other non-normal distributions how can we construct this joint pdf or joint cdf in fact the problem is more complex when we have say two different random variables x and y and either of them are following different distributions so in this case we have x and y and both of them are following normal distribution but there may be a case when x1 and x2 are correlated and one is following say log normal distribution another is following exponential distribution so in that case how to develop the joint distribution first before we implement that in our reliability analysis so that's the main uh, idea of today's lecture now for that 
the first model that we are going to study is Morgenstern model. Now, if we have say x1 and x2, two random variables whose marginals are given. Now, marginals can be defined in terms of cumulative distribution functions or probability density functions either way. If we have either of this information, either capital CDF or small pdf because we can convert one into other, then the Morgenstern's bivariate CDF is defined by this expression. Now, if you look at this expression, you can see on the right hand side, we have marginal CDF of x1 and x2. And then there is a scalar parameter alpha. The question is, when we have marginal CDFs, the moment we try to construct the joint CDF, we first need to know this alpha. Obviously, the corresponding joint PDF, we can also find out if we differentiate the first expression for joint CDF twice with respect to x1 and x2, then what we get is the joint probability density function. So that also you can see on your screen. And in this case also, if you look at the expression on the right hand side, we have joint, uh, we have small PDF and capital CDF of x1 and x2. But the moment we try to plot this expression between x1 and x2, obviously the first thing we need to know again, the scalar parameter alpha on the right hand side. Now, in this expression, we are given marginal PDFs and obviously the joint PDF will have a value greater than 0. And we can also prove that this alpha, that scalar parameter that we need to first estimate its value is less than 1. So it satisfies this expression. So modulus of alpha, that is the scalar value, is less than or equal to 1. This parameter alpha is obviously related to the correlation coefficient because the moment we have two random variables with some correlation coefficients, that is also reflected in the joint PDF and obviously this alpha parameter satisfies the correlation between the two. So for that, the definition of correlation coefficient between 1 and 2 you can see on your screen. And if you recall that once we subtract mean and divide it by the standard deviation, obviously the first moment of the random variable is going to be 0. So we can put the expression of if x1, x2 in this expression of correlation coefficient rho 1, 2 and then we can simplify further and then uh, we can show that this rho 1, 2 will have a very compact expression which is 4 alpha times q1 into q2. So alpha, that is the scalar parameter, is nothing but rho 1, 2 divided by 4 q1, q2. And obviously, what is q1? q1 is the expression you can see on your screen. Now, so if we have two random variables which are correlated and uh, they are defined by their marginals, obviously, we know the correlation coefficient. Our task is to find out this q1 and q2. So for qi, the expression is given. So if we just put i equal to 1 and the respective expressions, if we put in this uh, formula and we can find out what is q1. Similarly, we can also find out what is q2. Now, from this expression of rho 1, 2, I leave it as a home task. You put this <coughs> expression of f x1, x2 and then uh, simplify it and try to get the expression of rho 1, 2 in this compact form, which is 4 alpha times q1, q2. 
Now, the details of this uh, derivation can also be found in uh, this research paper. And in this course, very often we will uh, refer to some research papers because some of the topics are well discussed in papers and not in books. So, those who are interested, they can also refer to this paper for the detailed derivation. However, this is very simple. You just need to put the expression of f x1, x2 in this expression of rho 1, 2 and just apply this simplification and then ultimately you will get the expression of rho 1, 2 in the compact form. So, the moment a problem is given, that means we are given the definition of x1 and x2, their marginals and the correlation coefficients. Immediately, we can find out this scalar parameter alpha. And the moment we know this scalar parameter alpha, we can construct the joint distribution between x1 and x2. So, the research paper that I just referred they actually found out the expression of q1, q2 and for that they first segregated the random variables in two major groups and uh, in the group 1 these are the random variables identified and these uh, distributions are reducible to standard forms through linear transformation and there are a second group which obviously does not offer the liberty that we cannot transform those random variables in standard form through linear transformations. Now, obviously, these two tables, they are not exhaustive. If you have any distribution beyond these listed distributions, obviously, we can easily verify whether they satisfy this linear transformation. If they, we can find out their respective Q values. Now, obviously, what is the expression of QI? You can see on your screen. So, it comes from the marginals. And then, uh, the paper also estimated Q1, Q2 for all these random variables in different groups. So, you can see the Q values for different distributions listed here. So, the moment we have a problem where we have, say, two dimensions, that means two different random variables, and then we our task is to first identify the marginals and then just check whether they fall in group 1 or in group 2, then accordingly we can find out. And as I said, if we have a new distribution, which is not listed in these two groups, then obviously we can also evaluate QI from the first principle that is shown at the top of your screen. Okay, so obviously this Morgenstern model, it is valid and it must satisfy this condition because in any case the PDF value cannot be less than zero it is always uh, greater than 0 that we must check and for that uh, the property of alpha is there it must be satisfied so whenever we estimate alpha the first check we do we verify whether its value is less than or equal to 1 its absolute value because otherwise there may be a case where this joint distribution will have a negative value which is not correct because that does not satisfy the prime requirement of any PDF. Now, this Morgenstern model, it is valid over a range of correlation coefficients that I will discuss in a minute. So, let us first consider a problem. We have x1 and x2 which are marginally normal and uniform. So, you can see in this case we have two random variables and they are following two different distributions. Obviously, in that case, the moment we identify the type of marginal, for that we can estimate what is Q1 and Q2. So, in this case, Q1 is point 
0.282 and Q2 is 0.289. Then for alpha, it has to be less than or equal to 1. So the absolute value of alpha we can verify. So in this case, the expression of alpha we have already derived that is rho 1 2 divided by 4 times q1 q2. So then what we get from this expression we can find out what is the range of rho 1 2. So you can see the range of rho 1 2 for which alpha is less than or equal to 1 is uh, 0.326. So the maximum permitted value rho 1 2 for group 1 distribution and the upper bounds of maximum permitted rho 1 2 for group 2 distributions are given in tables. So you can see for table 1 the values of correlation coefficients for which this Morgenstern model is valid is identified. So you can see Morgenstern model can be applied for this range of correlation coefficients. So the question is whenever we have uh, distributions, a set of distributions where this uh, correlation coefficient is more than these values then what to do that we will discuss as we progress in this lecture series. So let us first take a problem. We have x1 and x2 So, the first random variable x1, it is marginally normal, its mean and standard deviation is are given. So, mean value is 5, standard deviation is 1.5 and the second random variable x2 is following exponential distribution. For exponential distribution, we have only one parameter, so the mean value is given here. And the correlation coefficient between 1 and 2 is also given, in this case it is minus 0.2. Our task is to find out the joint distribution using Morgenstern model. So obviously, the first information given to us is that x1 is following normal. The moment we identify this distribution from the table I discussed earlier, we can identify what is the q1 value. We can also estimate this value using the expression of qi that I have already shown to you. Similarly, our next variable is x2 which is following exponential distribution and for that again we can identify what is the q2 value. Now once we have these two our immediate task is to identify what is the scalar parameter alpha and that we can easily estimate from the values of correlation coefficient and q1 q2 that we just estimate from the given parameters of the random variables. So in this case, alpha comes out to be minus 0 0.7092. Now once we identify alpha, then we can construct the joint distribution. The expression for joint distribution you can see on your screen. Obviously, our next task is to substitute the values of fx1 and fx2 and that if we do, we get this expression. Obviously, it looks a little complex, but if you look at the components of these expressions, all of them are known to us. <laughs> then for ease of calculations, we just split this into groups because we have different components in product form. So, we can express if x1 x2 in this format of h1 times h2 we just split this complete expression into two segments and then we find out what is h1 and what is h2 and once we find it out then product of these h1 and h2 will give us the pdf joint pdf between x1 and x2 now from this joint pdf we can estimate the marginal and we can also compare it with the marginals from where we started our estimation for joint PDF. So what you can see on your screen, the first one, the blue line 
is actually the marginal PDF that is given to us. Now obviously the first one is normal, so we get a bell-shaped curve and if you look at the mean value it is at 5, so obviously our peak is also at 5. So that's the first marginal distribution. The one blue line that comes from the original definition, while the yellow line that you can see on your screen, it comes from the joint distribution. So we have now the joint distribution. If we integrate this joint distribution over the complete domain of x2, obviously we will be left with x1 and that is the marginal of x1 and that is what you can see using this yellow line. So the marginal distribution perfectly matches with the original one from where we started. That means our estimation of joint distribution using Morgenstern model is okay. Similarly, we can also check the other marginal, the second marginal. In this case, it was exponential. So the blue line again gives us the original definition while the yellow line is from the joint distribution that we have already estimated. And then if we plot the joint distribution, you can see the shape of this joint distribution and now we have this joint distribution which is otherwise very difficult to construct from the margin. Okay. So, let us take a second problem. In this case again, we have two random variables x1 and x2. But in this case, the first random variable is following log normal distribution with sample mean and sample standard deviation you can see on your screen. And then the second random variable is following type 1 smallest. And in this case also, we are given the sample mean and sample standard deviation. And the correlation coefficient between these two random variables is 0.25. So, our task again is to find out the joint distribution. So, what we do? We first find out the properties of log normal distribution. So, for that first we estimate coefficient of variation because the sample mean and standard deviation along with coefficient of variation gives us the properties of this distribution which is log normal. So, we can easily estimate the first property sigma ln x1 is in this case 0.2462. And the second parameter of the log normal distribution also we can estimate and in this case it is 1.9403. So, for first random variable log normal distribution we now have the properties of log normal distribution. And then once we have the properties of log normal distribution, then immediately what we can do, we can find out Q1 for this distribution. So this we get the expression of QI or from the table that I shared with you in the previous slides. So the value of Q1 in this case is 0.2764. Now our next task is to find out the Q1 or Q2 value for the second distribution. So the second random variable is type 1 smallest. So for that, we can find out the parameters. So you can see on your screen the parameters of the type 1 smallest are estimated. So alpha x2 in this case it is 1.2825. And the u, the second parameter of this distribution is 7.950. Now, once we do that, for this case, also we can estimate what is q2. And in this case, it is a constant value and that is 0.27. Now, the moment we estimate this q1 and q2, obviously, our next task is to find out the scalar parameter alpha. Now, the alpha we can easily estimate from this compact expression rho 1 2 divided by 4 times q1 q2. All of them are known now so we can put their values and find out what is the value of scalar parameter alpha. So in this case it is 0 0.8374 and if we again plot 
the marginals, the blue line we get from the original definition and the yellow line that we get from the joint distribution. We are going to uh, write down the expression of joint distribution in a minute, but first check uh, we need to do is whether these two marginals match. So in both the cases, we have a perfect match and that tells uh, our estimation is correct. We are going to just write down the expression of joint distribution in a minute because only when we have the joint distribution, then only we can estimate this blue line on your screen. So for that, let us continue our exercise. So we have the expression for joint distribution between x1 and x2. And on the right hand side, we know all the component functions. So in this case, again, we split it into three components. And the first one, h1, we can estimate now. And then we put the values of all known parameters. Similarly, we find out h2. And then here also, we put the values of the parameters. And then finally, h3. And once we have these three, then we can find out what is f x1 and x2 because now we know the complete expression of h1, h2, h3. And the moment we do that, then we can numerically integrate over one dimensions. See, if we need the marginal of x1, then we integrate over the complete domain of x2 and then immediately we get f of x1 and that's how this blue line on the right hand side was estimated. Similarly, we can also find out the marginal of x2. And then once we have this, we can also combine and plot f of x1 and x2. And that's what you can see on your screen. So the joint distribution between these two random variables are now available. This is the PDF. And then we can also find out the CDF. Now, up to this point, we have only covered two random variables, but we can easily extend this model for multiple random variables. And for n number of random variables, we can easily extend this expression. So you can see on your screen, so capital FX is in this product form. Obviously, for two dimensions, if you just expand the right hand side, you will get the expression that we discussed earlier. And for small PDF, we have the expression also on your screen. So if you have more than two random variables, we can easily extend the Morgenstern model and you can see the scalar parameter on the right hand side. So alpha 1, 2 up to k, depending upon the number of random variables we have, is also related to the correlation coefficient. And if you look at this expression, on the right hand side, we have q1, q2 up to qk. So depending upon the marginals we have, our first task is to find out this q1, q2 up to qk using the expression of qi. Then once we know that the correlation coefficient comes from the statistical analysis so that we can easily estimate. And once we know the correlation coefficient on the left hand side, this scalar parameter, we can easily find out provided it must satisfy certain criteria that we have already discussed that its value, absolute value should be less than or equal to one so that the range of correlation coefficient is satisfied and the PDF always remains positive. Once we follow this model, we can extend this for as many random variables we have. We just need to increase this parameter i and then we can address the problem. So we can develop the joint distribution when we have multiple random variables with different types of distribution. That's more important because in actual problem, we are supposed to deal with multiple random variables, those who 
are supposed to follow different distributions. Not always we get a favorable case when all the distributions are following the same type. So we have the first model, Morgenstern model for joint distribution. The only thing is our main task is to find out this QI. The moment we get this QI and then we can easily find out the scalar parameter. And the moment we have this scalar parameter, we can construct joint PDF or joint CDF. So that's all about Morgenstern model. Now, if we have a problem where we have, say, three dimensions or three different random variables, they are standard normal, but the correlation coefficients now we can see between 1, 2, 2, 3 and 1, 3. They are same and in this case it is 0 0.3 and we also have 1, 2, 3 which is in this case 0 0.05. So our task is to find out the Morgenstern model. So in this case because all of them are following same distribution, so Q1, Q2 and Q3 they are all same which is equal to Q and in this case it is 0 0.282 and the moment we estimate this we can also find out scalar parameters which in this case 0.3 times pi and then uh, once we do that we can find out the scalar parameter between three dimensions that also you can see in your, on your screen it is minus 0 0.2784. The moment we do that, now next task is to develop the joint distribution. So in this case, you have three components, three marginals. From that, uh, we can estimate this subfunctions. And once we split this fx into two subfunctions, we can actually calculate using this expression on your screen. Now, obviously, this is in three dimensions. So we have x1, x2, x3. Uh, it is difficult to plot, not always we can plot this if we have multiple dimensions, that's very difficult to plot. But we can still find out whether our estimation is correct or not. So in this case also, once we have the joint distribution, from that we can ma find out marginals along 1, 2 and 3. And then we can compare the original de definition of the marginal distributions and what we get from numerical integration of this joint distribution. So obviously, if you have three dimensions or three random variables, then we have f x1, x2, x3. So if we need to find out the marginal of x1, say f x1, obviously we have to integrate x over x2 and x3. Obviously, we have to apply the appropriate range for those random variables because in this case we have normal distributions along x2 and x3 also. They extend from minus infinity to plus infinity. So if we numerically integrate this joint distribution, obviously we have to have sufficient range to cover the domain of x2 and x3 and then we will be left with f of x1 that we can compare with the original definition and that is how we check whether our estimation is correct or not. So that is the first check. Second one is obviously the total, I mean, volume under this joint PDF will be again one that also numerically we can integrate and we can verify. And the last thing obviously because we estimate alpha from the correlation coefficient, so automatically correlation coefficient will be satisfied that uh, we don't need to check separately, but if the need be, we can also verify that from the joint definition. With that, let us close our discussion on uh, Morgenstern model. In the next lecture, uh, we will continue our discussion on other models for isoprobabilistic transformation. Thank you very much.